What's going on guys? So today I'm out here at Camper Clinic RV in Rockport, Texas, and we're gonna take a look at this Grand Design Momentum. This is a beautiful toy hauler, new for 2021, has a lot of really cool and very interesting cues to it, and I think you're gonna enjoy this video, so hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, before we get too much further, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this toy hauler has a gross vehicle weight rating of 20,000 pounds. It rides on three 7,000 pound axles. It has a cargo capacity of 3,804 pounds. And it has 17.5 inch H rated tires. That is very, very cool. You can film all the way up to 125 PSI. So that's kind of new. So 17.5s are typically what you would see on your dual axle units that have 8,000 pound axles. So the fact that they're running 17.5 inch H rated tires on 7,000 pound axles, that means you have a total axle capacity on this unit of 21,000 pounds and you have upgraded tires. So that is an excellent package. Again, this is a triple axle toy hauler absolutely humongous just check that out let's take a quick look around the outside of this unit then i'll work our way inside up front you have the moride rubber pin box very cool i like how they do the contrasting tones right here and they put a very very nice durable finish on this unit very very nice this has the level up hydraulic landing gear leveling system six point here's your power cable here Let's take a look at the storage. You guys know I like the thick baggage doors and this definitely has thick baggage doors. They put your auto leveling controls right here. Right here is your wet bay. Very, very nicely laid out. You have your low point drains right there and a nice panel here to control everything. Plus a water filter already pre-installed. Power, and this is gonna be for your cable. Inside, this has a massive storage. Nice size aluminum bath deck up here. Very, very nice storage. And what is kind of rare in the toy hauler market, especially these larger toy haulers, is the use of a drop frame. So Grand Design actually puts a drop frame on their larger toy haulers. And it's a 10 inch I-beam on a 12 inch main beam. So they set this up right. This is what I like to see. 10 inch I-beam attached to a 12 inch main beam. Rack and pinion slide right here. This is gonna be the back of your furnace and that's the back of your water heater. Right here is the back of your refrigerator. This is gonna have a gas electric refrigerator. This is kind of the cue to look for if you wanna see from the outside. This is also gonna have an Onan generator pre-installed and this is the exhaust pipe coming from it. Stepping back a little further, you can see your three 7,000 pound axles right here. This utilizes the Cree 3000 suspension system in between each one of them. Your tires again are H-rated 17.5 inch tires and these are from a company called Roadmaster. So this is a little bit different. This is a different brand than I typically see on Grand Design. So it looks as if they went from the G-rated Westlakes to the H-rated Roadmaster tires. These are definitely a rib style tire. You can tell from the traction. This definitely follows that rib platform that you would see on a lot of over the road trailers and trucks. Here's your sewer connection, your rear landing gear. So this is gonna be your fueling station right here if you have toys, quads, things like that that you need to put fuel into. This has a folding ladder on the side so you can get on the full walk-on roof. Very nice. Basically gives you the ability to fold the ladder up against the side of the coach if you are traveling and then fold it out when you're not. The back deck has already been deployed on this unit. Has a nice LED light strip complete with awning for the back deck area. Very nice. So as we walk around, you can see more of this back deck area, plus the screen doors that slide shut there, all frameless windows. This is gonna be kind of an exhaust vent. You have one on the front upper side over there as well that allows air to kind of cross ventilate in here in case you have gas powered toys, just so you don't build up fumes and it doesn't smell real bad. Aluminum fold out steps here. No window in this door. You can see that these tires are from the Lion's Head brand, which gives you that warranty. Coming around this way, another rack and pinion slide. This is gonna be your outside entertainment area. 
complete with marine speakers on each side of it. And again, nice thick baggage doors. Really appreciate that. Plus there's a little hold here to keep that propped open. Coming around this way. Very, very nice looking unit. It does not have slide top awnings, but it does have three awnings coming off of the side. You have one over here, you have one right here, and you have one right here. So you can, in essence, cover up this entire side, which is really cool. Anyways, let's take a look inside of this Momentum 397TH. Alrighty. So I love the use of these new tones, these new colors that you're starting to see. It definitely gives it more of a modern, sleeker appeal. I mean, just the contemporariness of it. You have dark mixed with light, and then you have light, and then you have kind of a textured pattern style ceiling area, which is really nice. Plus the contrasting trim that you see there as well. Panning around the kitchen, you can see they're installing the new Insignia stove, which is really nice. This is an incredibly large gas electric refrigerator. It's the four door model. This is the largest gas electric refrigerator you can get in an RV. Tons of room. I believe these things are like 17, 18 or 19 cubic foot. Very large. Plenty of space for a coffee maker, which I absolutely love. Lots of cabinetry. You have three drawers here, and this is important because a lot of toy haulers have almost no drawers. So the fact that they're giving you drawers and cabinets is nice. You have three drawers down here. And you have quite a bit of room underneath the sink. I love it when they put the trash can down here. Place for spices, things like that. Nice little pull out tray. Again, insignia cooktop, very nice. Residential microwave. And an enormous pantry. So the shelves are about a foot deep. Plenty of space. Very, very nicely laid out pantry area. Coming around, let's open up some of these cabinets so we can see how deep they are. So in here, you probably have about a foot depth as well. Now this is interesting because that's closed off just for this area and this area right here. This is gonna be your radio controls and everything else. So there's gonna be something behind this area and that's why that's closed off. Plenty of cabinet space though on both sides. So you do have a lot of storage in this unit. Plus you have even more above the TV. So they give you a lot of cabinet storage, which is a great thing. Plus they give you drawers. All in all, you have six drawers in the kitchen and that is great. Looking in this area, you definitely have a nice seating area here. I absolutely love it when they extend the tops of the island to give you bar stool seating because this is just extra seating area if you're entertaining people in the living room or in the kitchen. I like your standard dinette with four seats. This also is a big standout feature to me. I am not a fan of having that really long couch that spans here. Some people might be. That's a personal preference of mine. But I like this because it gives you seating for four, five, six, seven, eight people in this space. What I don't like about this space is that it's all kind of squished together. That it's not a living room and it's not a kitchen, it's a kitchen living room. And if I come back here and kind of pan around, you can see what I'm talking about. It's all kind of in the same area. You're only about four feet away from the TV and that puts you directly in front of it. So if you're relaxing at the end of the evening, you're trying to watch a movie with your family, you got some kids here, it's limited seating that's comfortable and it's really close to the TV. That's my only gripe with this type of toy hauler floor plan. Coming up here. So typical on some of these toy haulers, you have a loft space. It's simply repurposing space that might otherwise have been dead area. And you know, it gives you an extra sleeping location. It's very tall though. So you're probably talking upwards of six and a half feet to get up there. So there's gonna be a ladder to get you up there, but you have to be careful if you have kids that are climbing up to get in there, especially if they're sleeping there at night and they have to get down to use the restroom, something like that. Something you have to think about because that could potentially injure them if they're not careful. And that's with any toy hauler that has that type of setup. Okay, now we're working our way into the garage. A lot of really cool space in here. 
You definitely have the elevated bunk area, so this can come down on that track system. You could probably sleep three, maybe even four small kids up there. It's a queen size bed. This converts into a bed as well. Right now it's kind of in the dining kind of configuration where you take your table, set it up in between here, and you know, you have a area to entertain. If you have a nice breeze outside, right now the weather outside is absolutely fantastic. And if we were camping in this, this is where we'd be sitting right now. Coming back. This is your back deck space. Feels very, very sturdy. Definitely a place you could be relaxing. Imagine if you're backed up to some water scenery or a really nice view. This is just an excellent place to be. You're elevated off the ground so you don't have to worry about animals, things like that as much. And this gives you a lot of flexibility. Plus you can open this up kind of like a door and you can walk out off of it if you hook up the steps. Very nice. You have all your tie down points here as well. It comes with this roll out piece of carpet that lets you cover this up with carpet if you're not utilizing it as an actual garage and you want to use it more as another bedroom. There's your ladder right there that gets you into the loft area. That's another reclining chair just like that one. So this is super cool and this is kind of different. Typically on these toy haulers you don't get a full bathroom in the back. You get a half bath with a toilet and a sink, but you have a full bathroom with kind of a compact shower, but it's not super compact. That's the thing. I mean, there's actually a good amount of room in here, especially with this little curtain rod holder and the super high ceiling heights in here. This is actually a really nice second bathroom. You have some storage space right here for towels and toiletry. You have a medicine cabinet with more storage right here, and you have a small sink area. This to me is ideal for the back of a toy hauler. This is just super cool. What I'd personally like to see is a garage that's slightly shorter. This looks to be a 12 foot, maybe a 13 foot garage. And I believe the specs on this garage actually say it's 12 and a half feet long or 150 inches long. So there's definitely a lot of room in here. And I would honestly say that you know, if it were me and we were looking at a toy hauler, I would be happy with just this space right here as a garage. I could carry everything I would want to carry. And I know there's a lot of people that have gas powered toys and motorcycles and things like that. And they say, no, we need this much space. That may be true, but there are so many toy haulers on the market that have these huge garages, but there are very few that would turn this space right here, this huge space right here into a bunkhouse, into extending the living room. I mean, if you extended this back a little bit, you could throw kind of an L-shaped living room design in here, put the TV against the wall, have a huge bunkhouse right here and still have room for all your bikes and a lot of the toys that you might bring with you. Give me your thoughts on that. Let's work our way up to the front of this unit. Coming up the stairs, no carpet in this unit, which is really cool. The only carpet you do have actually is underneath that slide right there and it's just a small piece of it. Looking in the bathroom, very, very nice size shower. This is definitely a shower that I don't think anybody would have a problem fitting in. Height wise, you could be up to about six foot five and be comfortable. You have more storage right here. This is actually that storage area behind the cabinets that you saw in the kitchen. So this is gonna be for towels and things like that. I think it should have had a shelf in here or something because it's a big storage area and you're unlikely to stack everything up all the way to the top, but a shelf in here would have been nice. And then on this side, you have a good size medicine cabinet. Lots of countertop space here as well. And a fair amount of storage underneath, underneath both. They've routed everything well to give you as much storage as possible. Now stepping into the bedroom, king size bed, very, very tall heights to the slides. You have lots of storage right here, plus you have even more storage up here, which is really nice. Again, it would have been cool to have some shelves in there. Nice nightstands on each side of the bed, elevated up, they don't fold over to the bed in a way that you can really roll into them. Great place to put your phone. Dresser here at the end already has the TV mounted. This does have day-night roller shades that are up here. This is where your washer and dryer is going to go. A lot of room. You'd simply take this out and you could put your stackable unit inside. 
There's your connections for it. And then looking at the closet area, quite a bit of room. Very nice closet. I love how they kind of radius this area and make it look really nice. Overall though, this is a beautiful, beautiful fifth wheel. Lots of things to like about it. And coming back down, you can see you have your LCI touch control panel here. Essentially turns all your lights on, adjusts your levelers, uh, puts your slides out, water pump, all of that stuff. Now this unit has an MSRP of $121,618. So this is a relatively pricey toy hauler. The actual sales price that you would expect to pay for a unit like this would be significantly less. So if you wanna call them to find out what the sale price on this unit is, definitely recommend it. Again, we're at Camper Clinic RV in Rockport, Texas, and they have a lot of grand designs in, and we'll be back. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.